Uh, next year, um, we're talking about essentially two uh, sets of activities here. One you'll hear is con constantly mentioned, Dublin City of Science, and you will also hear constant references to ESOF 2012. ESOF is, um, stands for Euro Euroscience Open Forum. So I'll give you a little very brief background as to where those came from and what it means for us next year. Okay. In July, from the 11th to the 15th of July next year, um, Dublin will play host to what will be Europe's largest general science conference, um, which is called ESOF 2012, as I mentioned earlier on, or Euroscience Open Forum 2012. Um, on the back of having that event in, in Dublin, and I should point out, by the way, that Dublin had to compete uh, to host that event, and in the, the final analysis, won the competition against Vienna um, to be given the privilege to host the event. So on the back of having that significant conference here in July, the organizing team and uh, associated groups have decided to look to see if we can use that as a mechanism to generate essentially a year of science-related activities and discussions in Ireland throughout 2012. So we're using ESOF, ESOF itself as an accurate event to build and promote science and science discussions and science activities insofar as we can uh, throughout the year. A little bit of background on, the, <clears throat> on Euroscience itself. Uh, Euroscience is the organization that owns this event. It's a membership organization for people interested in science across all disciplines um, in Europe. It was founded in Paris in 1997. Uh, it has some four, four and a half thousand members, of which Ireland is a substantial portion of about four or five hundred, I think, at the moment. Um, and a couple of years after Euroscience was formed, um, the founders decided that they needed an opportunity to get together on a regular basis um, uh, physically get together um, at a conference-like event similar to the AAAS, the American version uh, of Euroscience, their annual meeting. Um, and the idea of an ESOF was formed. So um, the first European or Euroscience Open Forum occurred in Stockholm in 2004, and there were 1,800 delegates attended that. Since then, it's been held in Munich, in Barcelona, last year in Turin, um, next year in Dublin, and in 2014 it will be held in Copenhagen. We're expecting um, at a minimum 5,000 delegates to attend for the event um, next year. So as you can see from the, the history of the chart, I mean, starting as a starting event, getting 1,800 delegates was a really significant achievement. And there has been steady growth since, so we're hoping to continue on that, on that growth line. Um, very briefly, I'm not going to go into the detail of this. Some of the people who are in the room will be, will be well familiar with the plethora of organizations and committees and structures and working groups that are involved in running this event. But just to point out, the major stakeholders um, in this event from an external point of view are Euroscience, um, the organization ESOF, which has a permanent secretariat now based in Strasbourg to provide continuity from one ESOF event to the other. And then we have a set of structures that are set up specifically around each ESOF event. So we have an international steering committee chaired by Paddy Cunningham. We have an international program committee chaired by Luke O'Neill. Uh, we have a public engagement working group, which is something that, that, that all of you would be familiar with here, chaired by Peter Brabazon, and a number of other working groups. And the, the program team is part of my organization. In terms of funding for this, there's an overall budget of in the region of 6 million euro for the entire event, of which slightly less than half is coming from the Irish Exchequer. Um, and we're delighted with that. And we're also delighted that that commitment has been reinforced um, again this year, and we are particularly, particularly thankful to the organizations who, who have helped ensure that in the difficult times that we have, that there haven't been any cuts um, to our allocation of funding. Um, we're also looking to generate income from, obviously from the event itself, in terms of delegate fees and, and exhibition fees and so forth. We're in the market for somewhere in the region of a million euro of commercial sponsorship from commercial partners, and the European Union have um, we're in the process of, of, of working with them, and the indications are that we'll be getting in the region of a half a million from the European Union. So that's an idea of the, the overall size of the activity that's planned. Um, just in terms of uh, the year itself, the highlight event is ESOF itself, uh, which will happen from the 11th to the 15th of July. I'll just touch a couple of stats on that, and then we can move on to talk about a couple of the year-long programs of activities. Um, major components of ESOF, um, are a science program. The call for that was issued in February. It closes at the end of June. Uh, th that's a bottoms-up call to encourage people in, probably primarily in the academic research arenas, 
to submit proposals and ideas and suggestions for sessions, papers, um, and uh, um, topics to be discussed at the event. The second element in there is the science to business program. Essentially, this is looking at the area of, of research commercialization. So the process of taking the research activity um, out, of the, out of the labs and into an environment where it generates a commercial return. The third one is enterprise research, and this is really an opportunity for organizations who are private sector research groups who may want to discuss activities in the private sector research area as opposed to public sector and academic research. Um, we will also have a substantial careers program um, at the event, and we're delighted that the Marie Curie Fellowship is a, has become a significant partner in this for us to the extent that Marie Curie will actually host or bring sorry, their, um, their own conference um, of somewhere in the region of 400 Marie Curie Fellows will be in Dublin for the two days immediately prior to the ESOF event. And obviously we're looking forward to all of the, Marie Curie visiting, the visiting Marie Curie Fellows to join us at the main ESOF event. And they are partnering with us in putting together that careers program. Um, something that may be of particular interest to, to a lot of the people in the room here, um, an integral part of all ESOF events to date has been a Science in the City program. Um, and this is essentially um, a, a program of activity that occurs in the week of the conference, um, which is designed to do a couple of things. One is to try and take advantage of visiting keynote speakers and see if we can find a mechanism to exploit their presence and get them out of the venue and into other venues and other areas and other activities in the city to provide an interaction with the, the local general public. Also to get the delegates out of the, the venue um, and into the city to talk to and meet with and discuss um, and interact with and socialize with the, the, uh, the local general public. Um, clearly we have to be a little careful in that we don't want to empty the venue um, at a time when there are particular sessions going on. So it's likely that there will be, you know, a lot of this activity will happen perhaps in evening time or out of conference hours time. But the, the entire um, uh, focus of this is to try and create an environment whereby the visiting scientists get to interact with local people who have a scientific interest who might who may not have an opportunity to actually attend the conference um, and that's going to be a really key uh, piece of activity during the during the week of the conference um, we also are expecting to have a significant number of uh, visiting international media scientific media so we will be putting a program together focused specifically on delivering to their needs and we'll be providing space for a partner exhibition so organizations or institutes, um, companies who want an opportunity to showcase what it is that they do um, and you know their products, their services, their offerings, um, we will have a, a partner exhibition for them. The major themes for the event, I'm not going to dwell on these because I know they're going to be touched on by a couple of people later on, but um, the themes, uh, these are the themes that were published for the call earlier on, so health, food, energy, environment and climate, science and culture, science reshaping the frontiers of knowledge, science education and innovation policy and, and information. So we're encouraging people who submit scientific proposals to submit them under one or more of those themes. Some of the questions that are, going, that are being asked or that will be asked or that we hope will be addressed um, in that particular program include these. And again, I think you'll find um, Paddy and Luke will probably touch on these a little bit more specifically later on. But this is just a, a way of kind of triggering um, some ideas or some thoughts for people. Um, as well as the keynote speakers and the particular sessions um, that, are, that will be dealt with as part of the call, we also have a series of partnership symposia planned for the event. There are four in total. Um, one will happen on each of the major days of the conference and they involve um, a large symposium session with Europe as a geography discussing an, a topic of mutual scientific interest with another geography. So Europe and and North America talking about the Atlantic as a shared resource, uh, Europe and China talking about cities of the future, Europe and India talking about nuclear power, um, a topic which you know, is obviously going to be, continue to be very relevant, um, and Europe and Africa looking at ways and means for science to support and promote development. Um, the format of these will essentially be two uh, high-level speakers from each side of the, of the panel of, and chaired by a, uh, an eminent person um, and the idea is to have a discussion involving the actual audience in the room on those particular topics. Um, very briefly I won't dwell on it, this is an idea of what the, the agenda might look like. Um, so 
Um, plenary sessions, which would be really um, not competing with anything, then numbers of parallel sessions, then some more plenary sessions and opportunities for keynote speakers. So quite a variety of activity uh, throughout the four or five days. And we're hoping for somewhere in the region of about 100 or so um, different sessions to be held over the four days. Um, here are some of the possible speakers, some confirmed, some not confirmed yet, but just to give you an idea of the kinds of individuals that we are in discussions with as keynote speakers. So clearly there are some really, really interesting names there. Um, at the moment, I think we have 10 plus uh, confirmed names, some of them on this list. Um, and we're, we're, we're hoping for as many combinations of stars, i.e. people with international name recognition who have something to say about the world of science, although they may not be scientists themselves, um, and clearly uh, leading scientists. So it's that combination um, of speakers. Okay, just move on very quickly to the public engagement program, which I know there's obviously a lot of people in the room are, are particularly interested in. Um, this is the, the sort of goal that the public engagement working group are putting together the, the, the program for us have set themselves. You know, it's to, com by combining Irish culture with the best of what's occurring in the world of science, this program will create a truly exceptional public engagement program. So that's, that's the aspiration for what we want to do next year. So the idea is that it will involve and engage with you know, an enormous variety of different organizations and activities. And these are just some of the, the, some of the examples of types of organizations that we will want to engage with during the year. The call for public engagement, as I hope you are all aware, went out um, some weeks ago and closes also at the end of June. And a big piece of this activity here is to continue to encourage dialogue amongst organizations that are interested in participating in that, uh, interested in exchanging ideas, combining ideas about what that might be. And we're looking for as, as broad and as deep a reach of participation as we can possibly get throughout the year so that we can help fulfill you know, the desire to have a year of science discussions in Ireland in 2012. Um, just briefly uh, on the, on the uh, public engagement proposals, um, for those of you who have gone through the call process and look at the guidelines, some of the, I'll just touch on some of the criteria. As I mentioned, the closing date is the 30th of June. The major criteria that will be used by the working group to evaluate proposals that come forward uh, include scope, you know, the extent and the reach um, of the particular proposal, the timescale involved, we're particularly interested in trying to encourage activities that aren't just one-off discrete events that, you know, although may have a specific or a large impact at that particular time, get forgotten about very quickly. So we're much more likely to be supportive of, of activities that have a, a, a time continuum of some kind. And ideally, we'll have a life beyond 2012 so that there's a legacy left after the, the, the event. Um, an opportunity to showcase uh, our capabilities, to showcase science, um, to showcase Ireland's capability in science and, and, frankly, to showcase Ireland's capability as a tourist destination for those visitors who are coming in for the event. So, it, again, showcasing um, that across that range of, of activities will, will be important for us. Um, we would like to think that this community would come up with some really, really original and creative ideas um, supporting this activity. So, um, a, lot of, a, a lot of kudos will be given to creativity of thought and suggestion and idea. And again, I mentioned earlier on, um, we want to try where, where at all possible to support events and activities that leave a legacy beyond 2012. Um, so that, you know, if anything, we can, we can be seen as either a seed supporting organization that helps start up something that then continues on beyond 2012, or if it's an existing event that we help maybe take it to a slightly higher level than it traditionally was at, and that new level would continue on beyond 2012. Um, science in the city is a key part of the public engagement program and essentially will be one of a particularly high level of intensity that will be associated with the week in the middle of July. Um, we're looking for a significant reach target inside the group. We've been talking about trying to, although my, my own dilemma is how do we, how on earth we, we actually measure this, but you know, numbers like three quarters of a million people as a reach target for activities throughout the year are are being discussed internally. Um, it would be great if, if that number could be higher, but it is that kind of scale or scope of reach that we are trying to 